Welcome back guys welcome to my channel and today I would be explaining you how to create a school fee collection system using Java. This blog is basically built to help the class 10 ICSC school students to build their computer project on school fee collection system. So if you are new to this channel please subscribe, please hit the bell icons to get the latest updates whenever I upload any useful knowledge sharing videos. So. I am a software developer and a mentor. I help students to uh, guide them in their uh, coding, gra coding grounds and in their science subjects. So you can follow my content and let's start. We would be discussing about school fees collection system. So uh, in this video, what, what are the things that you would learn? You would, you would learn how to make that particular program, Java program to uh, make a school fee collection software. You would understand the basic concept so that you would be able to uh, answer the viva questions that would be asked so please watch the video minutely so that you can get the viva questions and their answers and thirdly you would get the source code and you would understand the basic concepts of the code let's start so uh, before starting any project you must be aware of the uh, the project problem statement what we are going to do and what we are going to achieve the, the target actually so this particular uh, project is on school fee collection system so here what uh, students can, they can, uh, they can uh, pay the school fees, they can uh, pay the school fees according to, to their classes and the sections. So the program would be asking the standard in which standard the student is currently studying and their section, their name, registration number and all those details will be taken as input from the students. So this is the problem statement. So we will be taking some inputs, some relevant details from the students and our program would be intelligent enough to calculate the total fees of the student for that month and then they would print the bill and then again it would ask the user that do you want to bill the next student so basically this uh, program what we are designing this is actually built for helping the counter person who is sitting in the billing counter of the school so that they can bill according to the sections or the classes of the students okay by putting the details what is your name what is this thing that thing and they would enter in the computer program and the program would generate the bill and print that so this is our school fee collection software that we're going to build it's a console based menu driven program so in the next uh, slide you are going to see that what is the approach of our uh, program and how we are going to build that so we would be doing a menu driven program it's built by uh, by choice inputs so we would be uh, asking the user some direct questions like name what is your class what is your section what is this and that so that would be direct questions there is one aspect there is a console input aspect and using console input another thing we would be doing that is menu driven program we would giving a menu and that from that also we can pick it up or we can also give them as choices like yes or no or do that or this thing so press this one this key or that key so this is a choice driven approach based on the choice input by the user our program would act accordingly and the most important aspect of this type of programs and projects is that you will be using an infinite loop because the counter person sitting in the school fee collection counter he or she does not know how many students parents are coming and would be paying the fees that day right it's totally unpredictable how many students are going to come so we have to use a, a infinite loop which would only be controlled by the counter person they can terminate the program by their wish so that's it that that is that exit is controlled by that user choice whenever the person sitting in the counter they, they would want to stop the program then only they can exit the loop otherwise they cannot so it would it would run infinitely so the, our whole program logic would be set inside the while loop that is an infinite loop so you can see the code snippet that i have given in the ppd that uh, the condition is true that means the loop body would execute it would be it would be executed infinitely unless a particular condition is met that is written there if condition if the condition is true then only this loop would be terminated using the break statement now you know that the break statement is the jumping statement that helps us to jump out of the loop or it helps us to uh, start the next iteration of the loop to start the next iteration of the loop we are using the continue statement and to terminate the loop to jump out of the loop we use the break statement so this this is the code snippet that is a simple structure of our program so inside the uh, that statements comment entry part we would write our logic and to stop that loop we would use a condition the exit condition 
so you can pause the video and take some notes because these things are the basic things what our programs are using and you can expect some viva questions related to this stuff moving on to the next slide you can pause in between and uh, take some notes or some diagrams you can draw that's all now another important aspect is that we are using console input now console input means we are taking input from the console window the console window is the terminal window where our program is get showing us the output that terminal window is the runtime environment or the runtime uh, situation so we are taking the input from that runtime situation dynamically our program would be feeding the data with data streams using data streams from that console to do that there are some special classes provided by java two of the classes one of them is buffer reader another one is the scanner class in this project we are going to use the buffer reader class and this buffer reader class sits over means it's contained in a special package provided by java that package is called io package io package and a package is basically a set of classes a collection of classes so we have to import that io package in our program in order to use that particular class the syntax is shown in the ppt slide you can see in this way we declare an object of buffer reader and we use that there are some special methods in buffer reader class which helps us to read a line from the console window and utilize that in our program that we will be doing okay so th this is the console input part you can take some notes you can pause the video rewind that and you can hear it again so console input is the basic aspect that i have discussed in this slide so you can get these resources whatever i am explaining and what is the concept behind this particular project you can find it in the www.onlinestudiesmart.com this is the website that i have designed and i have just uh, put and uploaded this type of stuffs in technology contents over there for the benefit of the users so you can find free content over there and get enlightened and this is basically i have built it to generate or to create a open source development community to help the users now let's see the source code and uh, we see that how it's going to run so let me quickly explain the source code and uh, then we can uh, run that and generate the output and we can see how it's working so see i have imported the io package that is the package which contains the buffer reader class and then i have created the buffer reader object which will be utilized to create the console input now i have taken some arrays when in these two arrays there will be some items in the fees right there will be tuition fees maintenance fees extra curricular staff retirement fund emergency services these are some set of items that we see in the fee book of every students in different types of schools so i have some added some basic elements and the basic prices or the fees for that basic elements like tuition fees would be 1200 for all the students and likewise so these are the corresponding or respective fees for that particular fee items now inside this giant uh, while loop i have what i have done i have put all the logic inside that while loop so this particular piece of code would be executing infinitely unless the user presses no unless the user presses no and terminates the program so this will help the program to run exit to ex get executed infinitely and the exit will be controlled by the user only so next what we are doing we are asked we are printing that welcome to this school collection system instead of abc you can write anything you can change the source code and then we are asking some details we are taking console input from the user some details like registration number name of the student the standard in which class the student studies the section of the student and all those things we have taken as input registration number name standard and section then what i have done i want i have asked the user that whether that particular student uh avails the school transport or not if the uh, if the person avails school transport then he has to give the transport fees so that's why i have taken that input and i have added that cost also so fee items of student and fee items of the of these two arrays are responsible for storing the fee items okay if someone may have transport and someone may not have transport so these things are stored dynamically in these arrays and after storing those things what i have done i have also i have also checked a logic like uh, after class 8 there will be computer practical and the students will be taken to the computer lab so if the students are from 8 to 10 or from 10 the above the 10 means 11, 11 and 12 if they are in the section a means in the science stream they would be paying the lab, laboratory fees they will be taken to the science, physics lab chemistry lab biology lab or in the computer lab so they have to pay the laboratory fees so then only i have added otherwise i would i have not be adding the laboratory fees so these are some dynamic logic which have we have to add based on the section and the classes of the students 
after taking all the data from the user and running our logic what we have to do we have to print the bill so this print bill method is uh, responsible for printing the bill of that particular student so this is a basic structure we are printing the names to of the student registration number and all those things i have to print the bill number just randomly i am generating with using the mat.random method and then i am printing all the elements whatever the fee items are there okay this uh, maintenance fee this fee that fee and corresponding fees side by side we are printing that in a tabular manner okay using this loop you can pause the video and take the screenshot as well and can note the codes as well and then after printing that i am summing up all the fees and creating the total amount and i am printing that so that's how we are printing the uh, bill of that particular student for that month and then after printing the bill for that particular student now we have to process for the next customer or the next parent who is standing so i am asking the, this is actually asked for the counter person that is there any other student you want to continue to the next fee collection if he or she presses yes then we are continuing continue statement would be jumping over to the next iteration and again it would rerun the same code again and it would process the next registration or next fee collection of the next student and if the user presses other keys other than yes or y then the program would be terminated because because break statement we have used here in the else part so it would break the loop this while loop that would be broken and it would terminate because after the while loop we have nothing no code so it would terminate the program so that's all about the source code you can uh, take the screenshots and type it according to your choice and you can manipulate also take some notes and next i would uh, compile that and i would run for you what is the output and how to generate that output also i will show you so let me run this one i created the object now let's start the school filiation so we have to first input the registration number of the student so suppose the registration number is this one now name of the student i have put my name which standard suppose i study in class 12 the section section a do i have a school transport no i go by my cycle so i am not uh, opting for the school transport so i am pressing n so my bill is printed so my name my standard my section everything is getting printed tuition fee is this one maintenance fee all the fees suppose the since i am in section a in the science stream so i have to pay computer and lab maintenance fees and this is my total 3350 and then it is asking whether you want to continue for the next uh, fee collection suppose i want to press yes so everything is getting erased and again the next student processing is taking place so what is the code that is responsible for erasing everything that is done using this backslash f backslash f is an escape sequence character which erases everything that is behind that means in the terminal window it erases and then again prints whatever is after that so it helps us to erase and clear the screen time to time so whatever uh, we would be doing here we can run another for another student suppose the registration number is this one and what is the name of the student is and then we are putting the student section is seven so no lab fees keep in mind let's transport yes he or she he takes the transport so see here there is no lab uh, uh, lab fees so because he is in class 7 no practicals are done for it so now the price is this one now for taking the screenshot you can uh, press n and stop this and then you can copy this one for your output and you can paste in your word file and work according to your project uh, guidelines so that's the output screen so that was all about this school fee collection software and you can Take the guidance from the online studysmart.com where you can go to the blog section and click on the respective blogs, respective projects what you have and you study from there. You can do that. So it takes a lot of time and a lot of efforts to create this type of blogs and this type of videos for you. Only for you, it's, a for, it's just a free content for you because I have, I have heard that many people are doing business, taking some money with this type of project stuff, etc. But that's not desired and that is not uh, good. So you have to study by your own, study from the online resources, free resources and uh, invoke a culture and nurture a culture in you to become an open source developer, a coder. If you are coding enthusiast, 
so you should learn about open source coding so i am going i am creating actually an open source development community in online studies smart.com you can join us and get and take part in different kind type of coding contest or any workshops whatever we are going to organize later part so subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon to get the latest updates and please 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 you have to subscribe because it takes a lot of efforts to create a creative content for you that's all meet you in the next video